I believed that I was going to be a great football player. The reason I believed that is because when I was born, Dr. Jean Lemaire told my mother, your son is big, has big bones. He's going to play in the NFL. And my mother looked at him and said, what's the NFL? So before I get started, about, I want to say like 10 years ago, I shot an email to a guy that I looked up to very much and uh, he got back to me immediately and I told him I was coming into town and I really needed some advice. I was a bit starstruck because the guy, to me, I really looked up to him and uh, as you know in this world people don't exactly get back to you quickly all the time. And he invited me in, met him, sat down at a table inside his gym and we talked for about five hours and he was not in a rush and I picked his brain and he just opened up the vault. And at one point in the conversation, he took out a piece of paper with a pen and he started to map out a gym and show me what a gym should look like and why and explain it. And, you know, I, I, I'm not one of those guys that thinks he has all the answers. So him doing that, it was a huge help and it made me feel like this is the industry I want to be in if this is what it's all about. And that guy is Dave Tate. So thank you very much for doing that because... Uh, a lot of people don't give up their time like that, and I'll never forget that. And it, it meant a whole heck of a lot uh, to me. So thank you. So to tell my story, yeah, I own a gym in Miami Beach, Florida. I do have a business partner, and um, I, I have to kind of lay the groundwork of, of where I'm from, and I'm going to start there, and I'm going to transition into the business itself. And you got to hear this part first, okay, because it's all going somewhere. Just stick with me. So I'm from Fall River, Massachusetts, and I, I gotta ask this. You know Fall River? I was born there. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Let's give him a round, man. I'll tell you all about it. That's crazy, man. Every time I tell people I'm from Fall River, they kind of look at me funny. But Fall River in itself is a very interesting place. I'm very proud of it, but you know, a lot of uh, different social problems, and, and, and it's just tough. It's a hard-nosed place. And I'm sure everyone here is from a blue collar, hard nosed place. But this place, the reason I say that is because a lot of the kids don't make it out. Uh, a lot of drug problems, uh, alcohol problems, substance abuse. And growing up, I saw a lot of that. And I, I didn't understand like, what I was going to do or how, to, how I could avoid that because everyone does it. Like even teachers leave school at you know, 2.30, at 3 o'clock, they're sitting down in a bar and they're all drinking. And I thought that was normal. So this is my mom, Pauline Megna, and she raised my brother and myself by herself. At six years old, my father just left, decided he didn't want that job anymore, and my mom was forced to take on an additional job, and then a few years later, another job to keep food on the table. And I pretty much owe my attitude, my work ethic, and everything to this woman and her energy because she was like, just a relentless, tireless worker. And I remember her sitting down at this little, we called it a card table. I was going to say cod table, but card table. And she would take out cash from an envelope and she'll, she'd put like $20 down, $30 on top of it, five. And she said, this is what we have left for the week. So what are you feeling? Like, do you want pasta? What kind of pasta? Because pasta at the time was very cheap in boxes. So we ate a lot of pasta and we're from an Italian descent. So she worked her ass off. I mean, there were many nights I came home and, and she was crying and, and trying to make ends meet. But, you know, it's why do you do what you do? Why do I do what I do is because I carry her name with me. And it, it's a really big deal because she was my hero. I firmly believe that moms or the person that looks out for you, it could be your dad, but that parent that's the strong figure in your life they're actually your first coaches. And uh, I learned a whole hell of a lot from my mother and you're gonna see even more of that in these slides ahead. That's little Mark playing little league football. Uh, that doesn't do it justice because I was a little fat roly poly kid, okay? And uh, I basically walked to the line of scrimmage, get my ass handed to me and then go back to the huddle. And I didn't really know what I was doing out there 
but I wanted to play sports. And the reason I wanted to play sports is because all the men in my family, my uncles and the people close to us and people in our community respected sports. I'm from New England and sports are everything. And if the Patriots win, everyone's in a good mood. If the Patriots lose, you don't want to go to Dunkin' Donuts to get a coffee. Everyone's miserable. So I wanted to be a part of that because people kind of ignore me. I was a very self-conscious, insecure young person. And um, I wanted to change that, but I didn't necessarily know how. But this was the start of it. I just kept showing up to play football. So this is uh, the throwback with the, I got a little gold chain going on. I think I'm cool. Uh, not there just yet, but I was still trying to find myself. And at the time I was going to school and there was a point in my life where I was getting my ass kicked every single day. I was being bullied and I hated the way I felt. And there was no male uh, role model in my family. There was no male figure. There was no one to turn to. So. I couldn't really ask for advice, there, there was no, I, I, could, I had no outlet, no one to talk to, no one had my back because my mom couldn't do it and I was craving, like freaking craving uh, a male figure in my life, a mentor, uh, uh, a father figure. And this guy showed up. So this is Vincent Fitzgerald and um, he was the vice president, uh, vice president, vice principal of my high school. And one day he saw me hanging out with a bunch of kids who were bad kids, like not good kids. The, uh, these kids were the type of kids that, you know, ninth grade, eighth grade, they're drinking after school, they're climbing into people's windows, they're stealing expensive stuff from people's houses. And he saw me hanging with these kids and he called me over one day and he said, why are you hanging out with those kids? And I said, I'm hanging out with those kids because they're my friends. And he said, what makes you think they're your friends? And I was like, well, because we hang out and we do things. And then he looked at me and said, what type of things? And of course, I couldn't tell him. So he made, every time he saw me with those kids, he pulled me in his office and he made me stay there. And if uh, security around the school saw me hanging with those kids, they bring me to the office and I like, got detention for literally hanging out with those kids. Okay? So... I didn't really know why he was doing that, but he, had, he knew my mother and he knew what my mother was going through. Uh, he was a distant friend of a friend of the family and he really came to my rescue at a really important time in my life. And it's men like this in my life who changed the trajectory of my life like it, it was a godsend. If it wasn't for him, I'm not even so sure I'd be standing on this stage. So. This is where it's like started with sports and, and athletics and wanting to change my life, my mind, my body, my attitude. And there was a woman who lived next door in the housing project that I lived in. And she had all these magazines every day. She'd come home with bags of magazines because she worked at this plant with these, uh, this conveyor belt came through with magazines. And if there was a rip in the cover, she'd just take it. So she, one day she came over to me, she said, hey, I got some magazines. What kind of magazines do you like? I said, I love sports. She's like, perfect. She gave me this huge trash bag of magazines. So I grab the magazines, I go to the bedroom, I rip up all, all the pictures, and I plaster them all over the wall. And at any point, I could tell you, you know, who the athlete is, um, you know, his stats, height, weight, whatever, where he's from, what he's good at, what he's not good at, what the scouts say. And I was just obsessed with numbers and, you know, studying and knowing as much as possible about these athletes because what you're looking at right here, these are like my heroes. Like everything I did up until that point was wanting to be like these guys. And as Joe said, you know, Arnold, Joe, how old are you? 42. I'm 41 years old. I mean, the, Arnold and Rocky Balboa, forget about it. There's enough right there, right? I, I idolize these guys. I would literally run around Fall River in jogging pants and a sweatshirt at 4.30 in the morning thinking I was Rocky Balboa. So these were my heroes. And later on, we're at Ohio State. It's very interesting. Uh, I had a connection to Andy later on uh, in life, and I'll explain that in a second. So I show up at high school football, and uh, I'm on the freshman team. I'm 5'10", and I weigh 149 pounds because I went from the roly-poly kid to hit that growth spurt, right? So now I'm a stream beam. I'm a stream beam and I'm, I'm starting to lift weights. 
my grandfather showed me how to lift weights at the local boys club. Uh, I trained my, so every year, every day after school, my mother went to uh, a place called Bodybuilding Plus with a brown paper bag. And she said, I want my son to join for six months. I think at the time they took like $125 from her. And she said, you better show up every day. And I would walk from school to Bodybuilding Plus. That's right, Bodybuilding Plus. And that's, that was my hobby. Every single day I went to the gym and the people in the gym became like a bunch of dudes that looked out for that young kid in the corner who didn't know what the fuck he was doing. So they would walk over and say, hey, do this, do, do this with me, Mark, and they would look out for me. So I was building like this tribe of people who didn't even know my name, but they knew that I was a kid showing up every day after school to work hard at something he didn't know much about. So they kind of took me in. And, and, and I grew. I, I wasn't a very good football player. It was very average. Uh, and I remember my coach, Bob Bogan, telling me, you know, Mark, you have to go all out all the time because you're not very good. <laughs> and I said, well, what does that mean? He goes, you have to give 100% effort and empty the tank. The only way you're going to be good at this is to give every ounce of energy in your body. So on the field in practice, I would go hard all the time, like they're running through drills and it's a walkthrough and I'm spiking the ball out. I'm like, this kid's an asshole. But that's what the coach told me to do. And this, I believed, I believed that I was gonna be a great football player. The reason I believed that is because when I was born, Dr. Jean LaMere told my mother, your son is big, has big bones. He's gonna play in the NFL. And my mother looked at him and said, what's the NFL? <laughs> he said, like the Patriots, he's gonna play for the Patriots. And every single day of my life, my mother told me, you're gonna play for the Patriots. I don't even think she knew what that meant, but she told me every single day. 